agriculture led to us having people with free time. Well, we're not going to give them free time because if you're sitting around doing nothing, we're not giving you any of our food. Be useful, okay? So this is the division of labor. With the division of labor, we lead to what we call civilizations. Civilizations are complex societies uh, with social structures and uh, um, uh, division of labor, as we said, obviously, uh, but lots of things going on here. Cultural aspects, of this we'll, we'll study it in a bit. Okay, Artisans. Artisans, please, 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 artisans, not artists. The things they produce may be like art, but these are, in fact, workers skilled in a craft who make something and can do a really good job at it. Okay, we start making things, we have a civilization, we start trading with other civilizations around us or even the nomads that might still be around us. Okay, and as we trade things, our ideas spread to them, and some of the things that they might do spread to us. That's called cultural diffusion, the spread of ideas between cultures. Okay, um, You might see changes in leadership based on, hey, I like their model better than the model we have. Uh, concepts of social standing oftentimes are things that spread from one culture to another. We're going to see a lot of cultures having a king being in charge, for example. Okay? And another example is the invention of writing from the Phoenicians, spread through the ancient Greeks, uh, then later to Latin, and eventually to us. Okay, let's look at some of these early civilizations. And one of the earliest is the Sumerians. And remember the folks I told you about? All the things you want to see in a movie, make a good story. These are the Sumerians back in 2400, 3000 BC. And one of the things these guys do is develop the earliest form of writing called cuneiform, okay? And this is where they lived here in the Fertile Crescent, what we call Mesopotamia, the land between the rivers, uh, the Tigris and the Euphrates, uh, modern day Iraq. Okay, this is cuneiform here. This is actually a later version of cuneiform, not one of the earliest forms of cuneiform. Here we can see some of the um, transitions from the outlying characters from about 3500 BC uh, to the late Babylonian time period. You can see the changes here, for example, for fish over time from sort of a picture of a fish to a symbol that represents a fish. Okay, so the Sumerians, they built these temples to worship their gods. These temples are called ziggurats and they're made of sun-dried bricks. We've had this discussion, hey, it doesn't rain much there. They're getting their water from the rivers and the rivers are getting their source from up here in the mountains in other parts of Central Asia, or not, excuse me, Central Asia, the Middle East, uh, Western Asia. Okay, if we go past this, this is a ziggurat, a reconstructed one in Iraq. Uh, and if we thought, uh, artists believe that on top we would have had a temple to actually pray to our gods. Okay, let's look now at Egypt and the Egyptians. You know, walk like an Egyptian. Hey, the Nile River is the basis of, of course, our Egyptian civilization. The pharaohs are the rulers and religious leaders. And as I said earlier, uh, the problem we have with pharaohs is that as religious leaders, they're often constrained by what they can do, by what the religion dictates and what the priests actually say. So priests have a lot of status. Keep that in mind. Okay? Hieroglyphics are pictograms. Like our cuneiform, pictograms are a picture that represents a symbol or an object as opposed to a character like we have in our alphabet. Okay? We talked about that idea of the Fertile Crescent earlier, the Tigris and our Euphrates rivers. Okay, we've also got uh, that region referred to as Mesopotamia, and that's modern day Iraq. Hey, Mr. Paul, you said all that already. Never hurts to repeat things, so you will remember. Okay, here with uh, Western Asia and in Egypt, uh, looking at uh, things in Egypt, hey, here's an early pyramid, sort of a, what we refer to as a step pyramid, as they're learning their technique. Uh, hey, trial and error, right? Look at this guy over here. This is called the Bent Pyramid. Uh, we started a little too steeply, and someone said, that's not going to work. It's going to fall over, and so then we changed the design here. And as you see that this angle we've changed to becomes the angle we use for later pyramids.